foreclosure. We are, ha are continuing with our investigation into the foreclosure crisis. It is impacting us all around the United States. Uh, however, right here in Washington State, there is some relief that you can get. Uh, in fact, there's some, some new laws that are in place that may help you. Strongly encourage you to go to the Washington State uh, uh, Office of the Attorney General. Uh, I'm going to get that website up on the screen, and there's some really good information there. But you know what? What do you do if you've gotten a foreclosure notice? Well, what about if you are still in good shape on your loan, but you know because of a personal situation that some, some tough times are coming ahead, and so you contact your bank, but they don't get back to you? That's exactly what happened to Vera Johnson right here in the Puget Sound. And Vera turned the tides on them. Vera made it very, very public that the bank wasn't being responsive, and it's at some point in time in the future, right here on Public Exposure, as part of our continuing investigation of the foreclosure crisis, Vera Johnson is going to be right here with us. Edgar, as an attorney who deals with debtors, what do you do if you get a foreclosure notice? Well, when a client comes to me and they've gotten one, I first say, let me see the document, because a lot of times the banks will send a letter threatening to foreclose in some individuals see that as an actual foreclosure notice. Mm -hmm. uh, at least in Washington State, there's very specific requirements, typically under the Deed of Trust Act, that identifies what the documents are, the language that needs to be in the documents, and when it actually is a formal foreclosure document. Now, uh, in the, under the, the Deed of, Tr of Trust Act, I mean, do we have deeds of trust now that MERS is around? Uh, they're involved in most of them. Oh, okay. Uh, they're typically listed as the beneficiary on the loan, even though they have no pecuniary interest or I meaning money interest. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the way their system works. You know, it would it would seem to me that banks aren't in the real estate business, or at least they shouldn't want to be in the real estate business. So they would do just about anything they possibly could within reason to be able to not foreclose. It, that's that's not true, though, is it? Not really. Why not? Well, it's it's a it's a mixed bag. Um, there are some advantages in foreclosing economically, which I'm not going to get into tonight, but they can sometimes make more money on a foreclosure than if they help the person get out of it. Banks are incentivized to foreclose? In certain situations under securitized trusts and when it gets very big uh, with certain credit default swaps, other issues, there are times when it can be more advantageous, but again, that's I'm not a finance guy. Okay. I deal with the very small. Well, I'll tell you what, that, that sounds like, I mean, when we get into credit default swaps, that's part of the, the big aspect that harmed the economy so much. But let's get back then to the individual. Mm -hmm. So I get this foreclosure notice. I think I might be able to, if I get some relief, uh, you know, maybe lower my house payment. I think I might be able to make it. What do I do then? Well, typically what I advise is a several prong attack. The first thing you do is you clean up your credit. You clean up your outstanding debts. You do everything you can to make you as financially sound as possible. So when you request that loan mod, you're more likely to get it. Because if you can present a better loan mod, you know, basically than what they have, and you're likely to make those payments, the banks will work with you. Mm -hmm. The other approach, though, is it's like the velvet glove in the fist. You know, you have to be ready with your litigation. You have to look at those foreclosure documents, see if there's robo-signing in them, see if they've made some fraud incorrect dates, what, anything that makes it legally insufficient, you have your attorney ready on tap. If the loan mod doesn't go through and they're continuing to act unfairly, you bring the legal hammer. Well, it, it ought to be pretty simple. I mean, surely a bank would realize if, if they have, uh, you know, fraudulent documents or robo-signed documents, wouldn't they? And they wouldn't even pursue it then, right? Well, the problem is the banks are very insulated. You have the banks up here, then you have the servicers. That's typically who you give the money to when you pay your mortgage each month, and then you actually have a foreclosure trustee that's all the way down at the end, and they're the ones executing this. The banks oftentimes don't even know what's going on. Hmm. Well, okay, let's, let me give you an example, and I'm not going to use the real name of, names of banks. I, I, I go to ABC Mortgage Company, and I go and I get a $300,000 mortgage, and uh, I paid on it for a while, but now you know the, the payments of um, you know, $1,400 a month are just too tough for me, and I, and I need to reduce them. But I'm not dealing with ABC Mortgage Company anymore? Oftentimes they've sold it five or six times. So who do I deal with? Well, what you always start off with is whoever is sending you the check or you know the, uh, the stub and you pay mm -hmm. it. That's the first step. Try give them a call. Sometimes they'll tell you who actually owns it. If that doesn't work, then you resort to legal means. Either hire a lawyer, maybe go to a title company, uh, use the Truth in Lending Act. Um, mm -hmm use a qualified written response, a couple other legal methods, and try to force them to tell you who it is. Once you identify who it is, you get a loan mod package from them, fill it out and see if you can get it. Can I ask you this? Now, you know, realizing that you're a lawyer and you charge for your services, 
if I can't afford to pay my house payment, how can I afford to pay a lawyer? Oftentimes you can't, which is why, uh, at least in Washington State, we have a very robust pro bono program. Uh, many of the attorneys, uh, such as in the line of work that I do, mm -hmm. volunteer there. And uh, oftentimes you can look on the web, get some help that can teach a normal person how to pursue these things legally. We actually, um, as, as we introduced this segment, we talked about the Attorney General's website here mm -hmm. in Washington State, and, and I looked at that and there seemed to be an awful lot of resources. Is, is it pretty good from a resource standpoint? I've been amazingly impressed with the Attorney General's site. Um, and I think there are a lot of resources there. There's also uh, Northwest Justice Project and uh, Columbia Legal Service. There's a couple really good outfits here in Washington, at least, that work in this and really help out. And other states have similar programs. Do Washington State residents have more rights than others with regard to foreclosures? I'm not familiar with other states' foreclosure laws, so I can't mm -hmm. speak to that. But there's quite a few here. Do banks have more rights than individuals? <laughs> Well, typically, or are they just bigger? It's a matter of money. They can pay for a lot of lawyers, and unless a, a little guy can afford one, it's David versus Goliath, and not everyone has a slingshot. But if you find robo signing, uh -huh. can an individual find the robo signing? Absolutely. I've actually had clients come in with the evidence in front of me, slam down the paperwork, and I'm like, "Yeah, you found it." Uh, a lot of robo signing is just about finding the signatures. If somebody, such as when you mentioned Linda Green, mm -hmm. you see it spelled five different ways and obviously five different signatures, then you know if whoever signed your documents, check each signature. You know, we're almost out of time, but when you find that, do you call up the, the bank's lawyer and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to put the fear of Linda Green in you? I typically find it's better to file first and let them negotiate later. Okay. With that, that's going to be the last word. We just wanted to remind everyone that right here on Public Exposure, we're doing a continuing investigation into the foreclosure crisis. Certainly it's around the United States, but it's right here at home in Washington State, too. We'll see you next time. On